Hello everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome to my Apple Podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. One level of personalization that I really want to focus on for this episode is the ability to create your own websites. And there are a variety of ways you can do that, especially with cloud-based services. And there are also some application design for the Mac that can also give you the same kind of flexibility. The application I want to focus on for this episode is called Responsive Layout Maker Pro by Coffee Cup. It is $149 and it gives you a lot of flexibility and ability to customize your own sites. And most importantly, to create responsive designs that can be formatted for any device. So let's take a look at Responsive Layout Maker Pro. So let's go ahead and open the application. Here it is in the top right corner. When you first open it, you're greeted with an option to start out with a template. And this is what the template actually looks like. I'm gonna scroll through here and you can see that there's a lot of text and some images that are grouped in various different rows and columns. And let's see what this looks like when it is open in a browser. Okay, here's the browser view. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this window over so you can get a sense of what this looks like when it is responsive. So as you can see, the columns are adjusting accordingly to the size of the window. And this is basically the benefit of having a responsive design so that you can have that kind of flexibility. This works with photos and videos as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project from scratch. I have an idea what I wanna do. I basically wanna highlight three photo applications for the iPhone. I wanna show some image links that take you to each page, and each page is gonna have three photo stills and a video tutorial below. And that's basically how I'm gonna lay it out. I'm gonna break this tutorial into basically four sections. I'm gonna start with the layout so I can show you how you can set up your pages using columns and rows. And then I'm going to add elements to those rows, including paragraph, text, uh, headings, and so forth. And then I'm gonna to proceed to properties to fine tune the project. And then I'm gonna show you what you can do to fine tune your HTML pages as you prepare them for the web. Okay, I'm first going to begin with layout. On the right hand side, you can see there are three tabs, layout, elements, and properties. Layouts help you with the basics. How are you gonna lay everything out? Using columns and rows. I have two rows by default. The second row has three columns. An important thing to keep in mind is that each row consists of 12 spans. So if I select the first row up top, you can see that it is selected at 12 spans. It's the maximum width. That will help you as you begin breaking down your columns, as in the case of the second row. If I select the first column on the left, you can see that it is measured as six spans, which is the midway point. Now I have two other columns here on the right hand side. Now there are two options I can have. I can adjust the spans there or I can merge them. So if I select the column on the far right, you can see here I have an option to merge left and that now combines those two columns into two. I actually want to have three columns because I'm gonna have three images that I'm gonna display, which are gonna be icons or links, image links that I'm gonna set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add that column back. And I want each column to be the same size. So four goes in, three goes into 12 four times. So each column is gonna be four spans. See, and now my columns are evenly distributed. Okay, for part two of this tutorial, I'm gonna focus now on elements. The elements are added to the rows and columns so that you can begin building content for your responsive site. So let's look on the right-hand side here and just go over some of the options. You can see under the heading of text, you can add headings and paragraphs and different types of lists, block quotes, text, and text links. Under the image category, you can add various different types of images, including logos, square ads, and or image links. Uh, there's a common category for uh, hero headings and tables and rules, maps, and so forth. There's an interaction category where you can add buttons and form containers and input sections, and then a layout section for containers and subgrids. Now, one very important thing that you have to understand about how Responsive Layout Maker Pro works is that it's not like your typical WYSIWYG editor that where you can drag your content right in there so you can actually see what it looks like. What you're actually dragging in place here are placeholders 
for where your HTML code is going to ultimately be laid out or distributed. It's helping to provide an architecture for your site so that when you add your content, it's just a simple matter of just modifying the code once your files have been exported. And I'm going to show you how you do that when I get to that point. Okay, I'm going to start with the top row and I'm going to add a heading to that section. I'm going to use a heading three and I'm just going to drag that right into that section there. I'm going to double click on that space and you see I have a little menu up above. I'm just going to put in here my Apple podcast. I'm going to tap out of it and then select again and I'll have options to select the properties over here on the right hand side. I'm just going to go ahead and center that text. And we can make adjustments later and I'll go over the properties panel a little bit more later. So okay with that top row selected I'm actually going to add another row underneath because I just want a little bit of text describing what this page is going to be about. So I'm just going to go and back to layout and just quickly add a row underneath. And then back to elements and I'm going to go ahead and add some paragraph text to that row. And I don't want it to say much, I just want it to say photo applications for the iPhone. Okay, now underneath the paragraph text is where I want to add three image links to those three columns that I have set up. So I'm going to go to my elements tab once again, and I have options to add images and or image links. And I'm just going to go ahead and just drag the image link button over to each column. Okay, and for the final two rows, I just want to go back to elements and I just want to add some paragraph text underneath that. And then at the bottom, I just want to add a, another image placeholder, which is where my logo is going to go. Now I'm going to have about four pages for my website here. So I'm going to show you how you can begin to set up different pages. On the menu bar up above, you'll see there's a tab called layouts. If you select layouts, you'll see you have the option to add a blank layout or you could duplicate the current layout. So for convenience, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the current layout. And you now see that I have arrows in the top right corner. This is going to help me navigate back and forth between my pages. And that second page was created was basically a copy of the first one. So it's called index underscore one. Since each page is going to represent a photo application that I'm featuring on this little website, I'm going to actually change that name to be one of those applications. So I'm going to go up to the layouts tab up above and then click manage project. And you can see here are the name of the pages that are featured. I'm just going to double tap on the name here and change index one to handy photo. Now you can also see from this drop down menu that you also have the option to duplicate layout. So with handy photo selected, I can duplicate that one and then duplicate it again since I'm going to have four pages. And now while I have this menu open, I can go in and, and change them. So the next one's going to be Leonardo and PS touch. And so now using the arrows, I can navigate back and forth between the four pages that I have set up. Okay, everyone, I think I'm going to stop here. I think I've covered most of part one and two, that is layout and elements. For the next video tutorial, I'm going to continue to develop the content pages using the elements. I'm then going to modify the project in the properties panel. And I'm going to make some adjustments to the exported files, that is the HTML pages and the style sheets, so that I can prepare my project for the web. This is Tim Brown, my Apple Podcast. I hope to see you next time.